Hello everyone. In uh, this video, we will discuss uh, computer memory. Um, in the previous uh, videos, we did talk about computer hardware and uh, we said uh, computer hardware refers to the physical parts of the computer. The parts that we are able to see and touch make up um, uh, computer hardware. Now, the hardware components of um, a computer have been organized into units based on um, the task, the role that they play um, in a computer system. So all those devices that are responsible for getting input from the users or giving out output to the users um, has been put in the input and output unit. So we did discuss um, the input output unit as one of um, uh, the units in uh, uh, that you find in a computer. We also looked at um, the central processing unit. Now, the central processing unit, we said all the processing, the data processing that is done um, in a computer are handled by the central processing unit. We did talk about um, the arithmetic logic unit, the control unit, and the registers as the components that make up um, the central processing unit. The other unit which we'll now talk about is the memory unit. Now, all those devices that are used to store data while it is being processed, data and instructions while they are being processed, as well as after they've been processed, um, are kept in, are, are grouped into the memory unit. So when we talk about the memory unit, we are talking about um, um, a collection of all the um, the computer's memory, all the memory devices um, in a computer are in this uh, category or in this unit. Now, when we talk about um, computer memory, like we've already mentioned, um, uh, the computer's memory will store data um, and instructions that are required during the processing of data and giving out of um, the results. Uh, when the computer is working, um, remember from even from the definition of the computer, we said it's supposed to accept input, process the input and give um, the, the, the outcome. Now, as the computer is working, okay, it will be working on um, a piece of data at a time, a piece of data and instruction at a time, remember, Earlier on, when we talked about um, the central processing unit, we did talk about the registers, okay? And what, one of the registers we talked about was um, um, was the was the was the instruction register, where we said in the instruction register that is where um, the instruction, the, the the most recently fetched instruction, will be. So there will be a number of instructions that the computer is supposed to handle, but it will be handling one instruction at a time. So those instructions that are being worked on, they need to be stored in the computer's memory. The data, the piece of data that is being handled at a particular time also needs to be stored in memory. So that is the use of um, a computer's memory. Without a computer's memory, without a computer having memory, it will not be able to process anything, okay? The data that you are giving the computer is supposed to be stored somewhere. So if there's nowhere to store that data, then um, uh, we will not be able to, to use um, the, the computer. The computer will not be of any use to us. Now, um, when we talk about, um, when, when, when we talk about um, uh, storage, okay, this uh, keeping of data, um, for some uh, memory devices, they will store data for a limited amount of time. Then there are other storage units, as we are going to say, which will store data for an extended period of time. So as we talk about um, um, memory, uh, it's important to also note that some of these uh, memory units or memory devices 
they only store data for limited amount of time. Uh, others will store them for an extended uh, amount of uh, amount of time. Okay. Now, um, when we talk about memory, okay, when we talk about memory, we will divide the memory into two parts. We have um, the primary memory, which is used to process data or to hold the data while data and instructions while they are being processed. Then there are also secondary memories that will store data uh, permanently, that will store data permanently. So, so far in our discussion of uh, hardware, remember when we, when we got to the point of memory, I did mention to say, um, we have, um, we gave examples of the cache memory, the registers and the RAM, then we said we'll say more about this later. So that moment now has come. So um, the cache memory, registers and the RAM, these are fast memories which will store data and instructions temporarily. They will just store data while it is being processed. Once it has been processed and the, um, the processor no longer needs the data or the, that instruction, it needs to be taken somewhere where it will be kept permanently. And that's where the secondary memories come in. So secondary memories like flash drives, uh, memory cards, those will store data permanently. I'm sure even um, in your experience, let's say uh, you're trying to compose a message. Maybe, maybe you're trying to write a message uh, on WhatsApp. As you're typing um, your message, maybe you say, how are you? Now, before you can send the message, something, um, some interruption happens. Maybe your phone discharges and goes off. Um, you find that when you turn your phone on and you go to WhatsApp, you find that that message which you were trying to type has been, um, uh, has been lost, okay? Why? Because it was kept in a temporal location. It was kept in a temporal location while, while it was being processed. But let's say you have typed that message, you press send and the message goes. So now that message has been delivered, has been sent wherever it's supposed to be sent and you no longer need to process it. So it has now been taken from the uh, temporal memory now it has been taken to secondary memory where it will be kept for an extended period of time until when you decide to delete uh, that message. So the cache, re the registers, the RAM, these are fast memories and they store data temporarily. They only store data uh, on a temporal basis. Then we have the secondary memories like flash drives, uh, external hard drives, uh, magnetic disks. Now those who store data permanently, but unfortunately um, they are slow memory devices, which is why um, during data processing uh, you find that um, the you find that uh, the processor will just will, will be so. Let's say if this is our our CPU, don't mind uh, the way it's been drawn. Okay, so we have the CPU and then we have um, the temporal memories here. And then we have the secondary memory here. Um, the CPU will be fetching data from the temporal memories. Why? The temporal memory is, um, is, is, is fast compared to the secondary uh, storage. Now, um, the central processing unit, it's very fast. Remember, we had mentioned to say um, the CPU is able to handle millions of instructions within a second. Now, unfortunately, the, the, the secondary storage is very slow in comparison to the CPU. So if the CPU was to work directly or was supposed to, ret to retrieve data, directly from the secondary storage, that will take a lot of time and it will compromise 
the speed of um, the speed of the CPU. So um, to avoid that, temporal storage is put in between the permanent storage and um, the CPU, and whatever is needed will be collected from the temporal uh, memory so that it's um, it can be worked on. The temporal uh, storage is faster, is is it is quite fast and can match up to um, uh, quite close to the speed of the CPU. So uh, that is why we have this arrangement. Okay, so um, moving on, we've talked about temporal and permanent uh, storage. So now, um, how these are organized, how memory is organized. Remember, I'm just from drawing um, the CPU, the temporal storage here, and the permanent storage. How these are organized where we have secondary storage here, uh, temporal, then we have the CPU. How these are organized? They are organized in a manner uh, such that the computer, the computer's performance will be good. We are looking for high performance. And at the same time, we want computers to be affordable. We want uh, the computers to be affordable in terms of cost. Now I should mention, let me quickly go to, I'll come back to this. Um, the different memories we have, the registers, the cache memory, the primary memory, the secondary storage, all this, um, they are made from uh, different material. The material from which the registers are made from, cache is made from, even now uh, this is expensive. So if we had um, the registers that are very big, you'll find that, um, or, or if these were very big, uh, they will be very expensive. Those computers will be very expensive to manufacture. And in the end, it will be very expensive for the, for the user to, 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 to buy. Um, so to compensate for that, we'll say, okay, let us, let us have a bit of, um, uh, uh, of these expensive memories. And then we also we also include a larger portion of um, secondary storage, which is cheaper, so that the cost of the computer will be affordable. I'll say more on this hierarchy, but I just wanted to to emphasize this point where we said the way the memories are organized in the computer, uh, they are organized in such a way that will achieve high levels of performance at a minimum cost. Okay. Um, memory representation. When we talk about memory representation, we are talking about um, how this, um, um, we're talking about the units of measuring memory, the units of measuring memory. Just like um, when we're talking about mass, how heavy something is, the mass, um, we have grams, as the smallest unit, I think, um, of measure. Then, um, so we have one gram, two gram, three gram, four gram, five gram, six grams, all the way up to 1,000 grams. Now, 1,000 grams make one kilogram, okay? And again, 1,000 kilograms, I think it makes uh, one ton, just like that. That is a similar thing here. When we're talking about um, the data storage, in a computer. Um, the basic unit of memory is a binary digit. Remember when we talked about uh, digital computers, uh, we said they represent data using a series of zeros and ones. So a single digit, a single digit we have is uh, either a zero or a one. So this is a binary digit. This binary digit, um, the short form for it is uh, uh, a bit, where B is from binary, then digit uh, that. So a bit is just a single binary digit. And this is the smallest unit of representing data in a computer. Okay, it's the smallest unit of representing data in a computer. Now, um, just like when we, when we talk about uh, mass, for example, we said 1,000 grams make um, one kilogram, uh, 1,000 kilograms make uh, uh, this unit, 
etc. That's a similar thing. Now, um, a group of eight bits will form a byte. A group of um, eight bits will form um, a byte. So we have one bit, um, then eight bits will form uh, a byte, okay? Now, um, in addition, we have a group of, um, we have, we can get a group of bytes and we'll form what is called a word, okay? So a collection of, um, a collection of, um, um, of bytes, a collection of bytes will form what is called a word. Now, um, what is the significance of a word? Okay, the, um, the size of the word um, represents how many, um, how many bits or how much data can be handled per instance. When the computer is working on the data, okay, it will be handling them in groups of bytes. Okay, um, computers or the, the processing unit is very fast, like I've already mentioned. Now, um, as it is working, as it is working, it will not be handling one bit at a time. It will not be handling one bit at a time. Otherwise, that will take time. Um, it's like um, us human beings, okay? It's like us human beings, um, when we are communicating, we communicate in terms of sentences. So I will say one sentence, maybe if you have to respond, you respond after that sentence. Um, second sentence, you respond. Our brains are able to handle a group of words at a time. Now imagine a situation where, imagine a situation where um, if we had, um, okay, so I was saying, uh, imagine um, a situation where uh, you are able to handle a number of words at a time, and then we decide to say the smallest, um, the smallest uh, character that we can present when we are presenting information, the smallest character we have is um, a letter. Then we'll say, okay, I'm going to present letter by letter. So rather than providing a word, I decide to provide letters. So for example, when I want to communicate this sentence, the first one to say, however, the data is handled by the computer as a combination of bits. Then I start H, O, W, E, V, E, R, comma, space, T, H, E, space, D, A, T, A, just like that. Now, um, you, you are able to, to, to handle a lot of, a number of words at a time, but if I'm presenting information in this way, like this, for example, if I'm dictating maybe to grade ones, I'll go letter by letter so that they are able to copy. But if I was to present information in that way, you'll find that um, your performance will be slow in terms of uh, the rate at which you are capturing this data, okay? Because the rate at which I'm providing it is slow. That is a similar thing. Um, the smallest representation of data is uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a bit, one, a single bit. Now, the computer will handle groups of bits at any time, okay? Now, um, the number of um, bits that the computer will handle will differ uh, from one computer to the other. Um, so uh, we've said some, some, for some computers, the, the, the um, basically, first of all, the, the number of bits or the number of bytes that the computer can handle is called the word, a word, okay? Now, the size of the word will differ. For some computers, their word size will be two. Uh, for other computers, the word size will be four. For other computers, the word size will be eight bytes. Now, eight bytes is just uh, 64 bits. Okay, 
64 bits, then um, four bits is four times eight, because we said a group of eight bits form a byte. So four times eight will be 32 bit. So um, I'm sure when um, you're checking for computers, you've heard presence to say, no, this is a 64 bit machine. This is a 32 bit machine. What they are basically trying to say is for this computer, it is able to handle 64 bits uh, at a time, per whatever unit of, uh, of, of measure that the computer is working on. So when it is handling data, let's say it has um, 1000 bits to handle, 1000 bits to handle. If it is a 64 bit machine, what it will be doing is at every instance, it will get uh, 64 bits, process them as a unit, get the next 64, work on them as a unit, as a group, get the, the next 64, just like that. Then if we say this is a 32 bit machine, um, what, that, um, what that means is that um, it will be working on um, 32 bits at a time. So if um, the, the bigger the weight size, the faster your computer in terms of um, uh, processing. All right, so having, having mentioned um, the concept of uh, the word size, we can now move on to, to the next part. All right, so um, in terms of the representation, um, this is um, what we can provide. So um, when we talk about memory, we've said uh, the smallest size is uh, one bit and a bit basically is just uh, a single binary digit, either a zero or a one. Then a collection of eight bits will give, um, will give us one byte. Then um, a collection of um, 1,024 bytes will give us one kilobyte. A collection of um, um, 1,024 1, kilobytes or two to the power 20, uh, bytes will give us one megabyte. So um, if someone says my flash is um, one kilobyte or one gigabyte, sorry, what they mean is it, the amount of data that it can store is two to the power 30 um, bytes. So you can calculate the exact number of bits which can be, which are in there. So basically um, this is how memory is represented. Uh, today we are now talking um, uh, uh, computer memory in sizes of uh, terabytes. So terabytes, that's two to the power 40 bytes. Uh, so you can work out, um, you can do the math if you are interested. So um, this is about the representation. Now what we are trying to say here is a similar thing that you use to measure. For example, if it is distance, the smallest would be millimeters, centimeters, meters, kilometers, just like that. That is a similar thing which we are, um, we are doing even here. Um, memory hierarchy. Now, when we are talking about um, computers memory, okay, um, we've, de we are, we've devised a way of presenting um, the memory. This concept of um, hierarchy, we are talking about organization, how something is organized. If we, if we went in a governance, government, we have the hierarchy. And in that hierarchy, we have um, the president, then the, the next person to the president is the vice president. Then we have cabinet ministers from cabinet ministers. Then we have um, from cabinet ministers, and then we have, um, we, we, we have um, um, uh, ordinary members of parliaments, members of parliaments. We have um, local government, uh, uh, who are these, uh, the councillors, etc. Now, this concept of hierarchy, for example, in governance, it helps us to understand the amount of power, um, or the level of authority each of the key players has. Similarly, uh, when we talk about memory hierarchy, we're talking about how um, the computer is organized in terms of uh, memory. And the factors that we are using to come up with this hierarchy 
we are using three factors. One, we are looking at the capacity, how much memory, how much capacity does it have? The access time, how fast is it? Then thirdly, the, um, thirdly we're looking at uh, the cost, okay? The cost of uh, memory. So using those three characteristics, we can come up with a hierarchy, some structure that will show the different uh, computer memories and how they are organized, okay? So um, ideally, what we want is uh, to have computers with uh, which are very fast, um, which have a large capacity. Unfortunately, you find that uh, computers that are fast have a higher cost. So um, we have to show how that is organized. So when the when, when computer memory, the different memory components of the computer are organized, we are looking at them in terms of the cost, the access speed, and um, the storage capacity. Now, when we organize them in this way, uh, you find that the register, for example, it has the highest cost. It's the most expensive type of memory. It's, uh, it's access time, the speed is very fast. When you're retrieving data from the, the, the registers, you, you do it very fast compared to when the processor is trying to retrieve data from this uh, secondary storage, from this secondary storage. Um, okay. Uh, then in terms of um, the memory capacity, you find that registers are usually small. Remember what we said um, earlier on, we had mentioned to say the way memory is organized in a computer, it is organized mm -hmm. such that um, we are going to have acceptable performance, high performance at uh, a, a minimal cost. If you just had registers that are very big, that computer will be very expensive. If you had um, computers that had, um, let's say this primary memory, where we have the RAM, we have the cache and the registers, which were very big, you find that the cost of um, that computer will be very high, okay? Then um, if you had just a computer with um, very big uh, secondary memory, but without um, the primary memory, which we have here, uh, that computer will be very cheap, but its performance will be very poor. Remember we said this, when it comes to data retrieval, uh, it's very slow. Now, because it is slow, you find that it affects the performance of the computer. So, um, in terms of how memory is organized in the computer, you find that we have um, these registers, the cache memory and the primary memory. The size here, as you can see, as you're coming down, the size is increasing. Okay, as the size is increasing downwards, even um, the speed is reducing and the cost is reducing. Um, when you're trying to buy these components, in case, let's say you want to build your own computer and then you decide to say, let me go and buy RAM. The cost of um, eight GB RAM is actually higher or could be higher, um, higher than a 500 GB hard disk. You find that RAM will be on a higher side. Okay, uh, maybe what you can buy, maybe they say the cost of four, four GB RAM, maybe they say it's uh, 300 or 400 kwacha. You may find that a hard disk size of maybe 700, 750 GB could be the same amount. You, you pay the same amount for a four GB RAM and a 750 GB hard disk. If you compare the capacity, their sizes, this one is actually as a bigger size, but because it's slow, it's much slower, even the cost is lower. So when we talk about this hierarchy, this hierarchy is representing memory in terms of the cost, in terms of the access speed, and in terms of the storage. And this is how they are organized in the computer. So just to give you an example, for this particular computer that I'm using, 
it has um, 8 GB uh, RAM and um, it has one terabyte uh, hard disk. Um, yeah, the hard disk size. Um, the cost in comparison, you find that the hard disk is actually maybe cheaper than this, the RAM that it's, um, it's using. All right, so that's about the hierarchy. Now, in this hierarchy, the other thing that I need to mention, the way the memories are organized, we have um, the two here, this demarcation, the semiconductor memories, these memories here, we also refer to them as internal memory. Then this other, the secondary memory, is also referred to as external memory. Now, internal memory, we're talking about uh, the memory which the CPU uses as it is processing the data. And you find that these, um, the, this memo, the internal memory, you find it uh, on the computer's motherboard. When we talked about hardware, remember I did show you the motherboard and we said, when we're talking about the bus, uh, system buses, um, we did show uh, the motherboard. So when we talk about internal memory, you will find it on, um, you, 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 you'll find it on the, you'll find these chips on the, on, on, the, on, on the motherboard. So for example, the RAM, it has a slot on the motherboard. The cache is on the, on the motherboard. The registers, they are bundled with, um, uh, they are part of the CPU. So you'll find all these components on the, on, 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 on the motherboard. Then we have um, the secondary memory, which we also refer to as external memory. The secondary memory, um, these we just connect to the, to the, to, to, to the motherboard via the external, um, the external bus. So things like flash drives, things like the hard drive, these, they are connected uh, via the external bus to the motherboard. So that's how they communicate. Now, key characteristics of uh, memory. When we talk about internal memory, the characteristics that they have are, in terms of their size, they have limited storage capacity. Secondly, the data storage is temporal. They store data temporarily. Then thirdly, um, they are fast in terms of uh, access speed. And then in terms of cost, they have a higher cost. So if you are asked to, if, we, if you were taught to say, this particular memory that one has is an internal memory, then you know the characteristics. So uh, temporal storage, meaning it will only store data while it is being used. Once there's some interruption, power goes, or you stop using um, uh, that particular application, for example, the content is removed from the internal memory. All right, examples of internal memory, we've already talked about registers, the cache, and uh, the RAM. Then um, external memory. The characteristics of external memory is that um, it has high storage capacity. Um, the storage is permanent, meaning even if power goes, that data will be there unless the user just deletes. So it's like, uh, like, like I gave an example earlier, when you send your message uh, on um, uh, WhatsApp, once that message has been sent and it's no longer being used, it is stored on a permanent storage. Then if you decide to say, I no longer need the message, that's when you can delete it. But as long as you haven't deleted it, you find that that message will be stored there. Um, in terms of access, they are slower in terms of uh, access. Uh, this this uh, type of data, uh, this type of unit uh, memory is slower. Okay, then it stores data which is not data and instructions that are not being worked on. Then it is cheapest. It is cheapest, um, the cheapest form of memory that you have. Okay, so interaction between the CPU and the memory. You recall. Um, when we when we're looking at I think hardware again, um, we did give this drawing where we said this is uh, the CPU, and then we have um, 
the internal memories here. Let me just say internal memories here. And then we have uh, the secondary memory here. So um, in terms of um, the interaction, the way the, the memories will be located will be the faster memories will be closest to the processor. Then those memories that are slower will be furthest from um, will be furthest from the processor. Now, why this arrangement? This arrangement is done so that the computer's performance can be fast. The computer's performance can be fast. Um, if we had placed this internal storage somewhere here, uh, the secondary storage here, such that the CPU has to retrieve data from here, the performance will be very slow. So what we do, we say, okay, let us place the secondary storage for this. And then what will be happening is when the CPU needs data, it will fetch the data from here. So when the data is fetched, it is loaded here. So while the CPU is processing, um, the secondary storage will start, um, will start loading data there. Um, it's like the way we say in, um, in, in, um, in Bemba, we say, um, now what that literally means is that um, if you are slow, start the work in advance. Don't wait until when the data is needed. That's when you start um, working on it. That's what uh, that phrase in Bemba means. Um, now, bringing it here, what we are trying to say is this. Um, while the CPU is processing the data, this one knows that I am slow in terms of uh, data storage or data transmission. So it will start sending the data bit by bit, sending bit by bit, such that when the CPU wants data, as it comes here, it will find the data it needs. It picks this data, starts working on it, picks the data, it starts working on it. And then this one continues supplying the data at its own speed so that the performance is not affected. If the CPU it was getting data directly from the secondary storage, the performance will be very slow. So to avoid that, that is why we have this, um, this arrangement. All right. Um, the primary memory, um, when we talk about the primary memory, um, when we came here, you, um, one thing that we pointed out, we said we have the primary memory. This primary memory is also referred to as the computer's main memory. Now, this main memory, it's, um, it is a chip which is mounted on the motherboard. Now, the primary memory, we have uh, two of them. We have uh, the two the uh, two categories of primary memory. We have what we call the random access memory, which is abbreviated as RAM. And then we have the read only memory. The random access memory, this is uh, 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 the, the random access memory. This is the temporal storage for the data. When you enter data, uh, when instructions are given, first of all, they have to be loaded in the main memory. And it is from there that they will be passed on to the, the CPU for processing. Then we have the ROM. Now the ROM, it stores data that doesn't require to be changed. Now, this ROM, this is um, its primary memory, but it's the only primary memory that stores data permanently. And it just stores that data which is needed every time. For example, um, when you are turning on your computer, uh, when you're turning on your computer, even if, let's say, your phone, there are some details which are loaded. For example, to say uh, the name of your phone, if it's ITEL, if it is uh, if it's ITEL or if it is uh, Samsung, the details will be loaded. Samsung uh, S4, Samsung S8, uh, those details are loaded. Okay. In addition, the operating system, for example, Android, or is it the iOS? 
those details are loaded. So the basic information which the computer needs for it to function, to start uh, for, for, for startup mainly, is stored in the, in the ROM. And this information does not need to change. Okay, so um, that is the ROM. It stores um, the basic input output system so that as the computer is starting, this is the basic information that it needs, the basic information that it needs for it to, to run. So that is uh, the ROM. The ROM is um, just a very small chip um, and, and this size is very small. It will just store data that the computer will need every time for the bas very basic functioning of the computer. Uh, simply the starting up, give the, the output units, uh, output input units, which are there in the system. Secondary storage, I've already talked about. Um, they store data for extended period of time. The last thing I'll talk about in this um, lecture is um, how data is accessed. So the access types of um, data storage. There are two ways of accessing data or information which is stored in, st um, in um, storage devices. The two ways are uh, sequential access and direct access. Now, um, when we talk about sequential access, what we are saying is um, the data will be stored in a sequence, okay? Or the data will be accessed um, in a sequence. So let me just draw this quickly. All right, so imagine this is um, your, your memory, your, your storage device. And um, for this storage device, um, this is where your data will be kept. Each of these cell will have some data. So maybe here is where your message is. Now, to retrieve this message, if we are using a sequential access, or have to go sequence in a sequence, we check. Is the message here? No. We go there. Is the message here? No. We go to the next. Is the message here? No. We'll keep moving like that until we retrieve the message. So that is a sequential access. The data is accessed in a sequence. So if you're looking for the 24th record, you have to start from the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, until you get to the 24th record, that's when you retrieve it, you go in a sequence. Direct access. Direct access, with direct access, the, the, the record is accessed directly. The record is accessed directly without following, without going through the sequence to say, no, we'll start from here, then go there, then go there, then go there until we get here, no. It will just be accessed directly. Um, imagine um, a situation away from computers, just to, to explain the two. Let's say, for example, you're looking for maybe your union leaders, your union uh, president. All that you know is that um, this union president is in, um, is, in, is in B block, for example. You don't know the exact room where he stays. So what you do, you search for them in a sequential form, in sequential form. You start with the first room. Does the president stay here? No. You go to the second one. Does he stay here? No. Third one? No. Fourth one? Fifth one? Sixth one? Seventh one? Until you find where they stay. So in that case, that is sequential retrieval of data. So when we say, some storage, they use sequential access. This is how they are doing it. Then direct access uh, to the stored data. This is where, um, let's say again, we are looking for the union president, but we now know that this person stays at B7. So since we already know the address where they stay, we just go directly to that address and, and uh, meet with them. So that is direct access. So that's a similar thing with um, storage devices. So the two ways of accessing data stored in um, your computer system is either through sequential means or direct uh, 
uh, through direct access. So these are the things that um, I can say regarding uh, computer memory. So um, of course, if you look at your, your notes, there are more details that, that can be said about uh, this. For example, in your notes, there are examples regarding primary memory, examples regarding secondary memory, even the technologies that are used for different memories. Now that information, I'll leave up to you guys to, um, to, 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 to go through. But what I've given you is the basic so that from here, you are now able to, um, to build on and uh, uh, do more research, more study on this topic on your own. So thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, I'm sorry where there were interruptions and where the flow suddenly changes. Uh, it's because of uh, some disturbances that are coming here and there as we're trying to, to record these videos. But uh, nevertheless, I hope um, whatever is here will help you to understand uh, uh, CS110 and uh, even uh, be able to use computers successfully. So thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video.